Hi, I'm David Kalman uh, here with CBC Marketplace. Thanks very much for joining us on Facebook and on YouTube. We're here to talk to you about the CRA tax scam. It's a scam a lot of you know about because how many people aren't getting those phone calls these days in Canada? Uh, if, for those joining us from the United States, you will know it as the IRS scam. Basically comes out of the same place. I'd like to bring in um, Mark Simchison, who is uh, a, uh, a former fraud chief. Uh, with the Canadian Police Force, now teaches at Niagara College uh, towards the uh, St. Catharines area in Ontario. Uh, Mark, when you hear about this CRA scam, what, what are some of the things that immediately strike you? Uh, how big and complex it is, David, uh, how many victims we have here in Canada, in the States and abroad. And uh, biggest question I have, uh, and I've had the calls like everybody else, uh, why aren't we doing anything about it in terms of law enforcement? There's been a little bit uh, here and there as much as we can. It's uh, intricate and tough, but I think we can do more. Yeah, and, and as you know, Mark, in the course of our own investigation at Marketplace, we went to India. We were able to find at least two locations uh, where these scam centers were operating. We're targeting people in North America. Wei Yuan is, uh, has a, a question on Facebook. The big question is why, or is asking on Twitter, why is the RCMP not taking action? And, and Mark, we know through the course of our investigation that we went and met with the Indian police and the Indian police said they are willing to take action, but they need to hear from the RCMP. And according to the Indian police anyway, they say they haven't heard from the RCMP. Do you have a sense on, on why that might be? Because the RCMP, in fact, did not respond directly to that question with us. No, and as we uh, discussed in the show, um, I think a lot of police services are looking at this, at this as a fraud. In, in reality, it's an extortion. So it moves a heck of a lot higher up on the list of priorities or things to do. Uh, notwithstanding that uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of victims are losing their life savings in a lot of cases, um, there is something that can be done. And I don't, I don't understand why it's not being done either. We have the resources, and the RCMP has the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, at its fingertips. They run it. They're, they're partially responsible for managing it. Um, we can certainly supply intelligence to the Indian police. And uh, if there's a lack of communication, uh, I think that needs to be fixed. Uh, certainly, that's one thing that people are asking about today. Basma is on Twitter saying um, that we know that vulnerable people are being targeted. We know it's often the elderly. We know it's often uh, new Canadians, immigrants who are coming. And, and um, Basma is asking how they know personally so much about those they're calling. And I, I, Basma, I know just from our own investigation uh, at CBC Marketplace that sometimes it's just a cold call, but when they think they've got you hooked, they have a team of people who actually look up information about you online. You know, your address is often publicly available or other things on LinkedIn or social media to try to build a case that they know you and therefore they are more legitimate. Mark, you probably have some things to add to that as well about how it is they know about this. There's that, absolutely, David. Um, on top of that, for the more sophisticated uh, crime rings that are operating out of India, don't forget about the dark web too. Um, there are millions of people globally that have had their identification or identities compromised. And that information is out there for the taking. And um, that's the, that's a total other offshoot of, of this issue. Um, whether or not they have the info or, uh, or not, um, yeah, you're right, they're gonna get it. They, uh, they sweet talk to call the uh, callers uh, uh, into providing exactly what they need. And they just get more and more as the call goes on. Basma, you were also asking about um, the guy who leaked this information, and, and certainly in our own investigation, we had uh, people helping us who were on the inside, people who had recently been on the inside. We've taken um, our usual but uh, very specific precautions to ensure that they are safe, and uh, there are people who have essentially confronted guys. We had one guy who went inside, a hidden camera he was wearing in India, got discovered, they ripped his shirt off, smashed the camera. Certainly a scary moment, but he is safe now. He was not hurt. He was able to get away, uh, and we have confirmed that he is safe to this day. And that certainly is something that concerns us. Um, Adam D. was asking on YouTube, what number did they tell us to call? You know, these robocalls come in. And, and Mark, we see, the, um, we see the call display, but one thing that we've learned through this is that they change the numbers like every 12 hours, 
Um, they, they often buy VoIP, voice over internet protocol numbers, and they change them constantly. But also they have call spoofing, which allows them to make it look like they're calling from another number, even though they aren't, maybe even from a legitimate CRA, Canada Revenue Agency number. Mark, you might have something to add on that. Uh, they're uh, the spamming and spoofing and whatever else magic that they have. Um, absolutely. And that is a huge part of the scam. Uh, any of us in Canada here that receive a call from the 613 area code and the caller IDs themselves as a Canada Revenue Agency operator or investigator, um, the first thing you're going to think of, we all know Ottawa 613. And, well, I think this is legitimate. And the trap is set. Absolutely. Mark Simchison is uh, joining us from Niagara College. Uh, he is a former fraud chief with a major Canadian police force, helping us understand that CRA scam. Thanks for joining us on, on Twitter and on Facebook and YouTube. On Facebook, uh, uh, Guy Distriac, or D Detruzac, excuse me, are asking why these guys aren't being prosecuted. Uh, Mark, they're, they're in India, and so cross-jurisdictional always makes it more difficult. But we also heard, uh, and we've been talking about this, that the, it doesn't seem like, at least when you listen to the Indian police, that the RCMP maybe aren't reaching out to them and saying, look, a lot of Canadians are being uh, affected by even being victimized by this. Is it just not a priority, if that's the case, for the RCMP? It may not be. Um, I can't speak for the RCMP, uh, but... Uh, because this offense or these offenses have elevated themselves to the point that they're now clearly, clearly called extortion, people being threatened, uh, people being followed, etc. cetera. Um, it, it's doable now. Uh, and as we discuss on the, on the show, um, it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, but there's a couple ways to go about it. Uh, one, uh, try and uh, catch the back end here. Uh, there's always going to be runners and affiliates here working for the primary group in India. But uh, secondary to that, we can be a, a supplier of intelligence right across Canada. Um, some services in Ontario, for instance, where I am, uh, they've done a heck of a good job following things up and getting some of the runners. Um, but it's tough. And international investigations, I've done a whole bunch of them, they are tough. But the provision of intelligence to an international agency is easy. Yeah, and that's that's picking up a phone and making a call and making a request. Yeah, and we have uh, we have uh, our Department of Global Affairs in Ottawa to middle that. We have RCMP liaison officers all over the world and including India that can help middle that conversation with the Indian authorities. So there's lots of things that can be done. Uh, my emphasis would be on a uh, group think, a uh, group project of sorts, uh, not necessarily pinpointing uh, the bad guys here because mm -hmm. they're over there for the most part, but working on the intel side and then providing it after the fact. I've uh, got a bunch of questions here coming in from Rob, from Darren, from Petra, and another one from Adam D. on YouTube. So I'll get right to them. Uh, Rob on Facebook, Rob Mitchell's asking, if there, is there anything that can be done to get the money back? What do you think, Mark? Is it, is it gone? Unfortunately, it's gone. Uh, that, is, that is a reality we face. You know, one of the things that they're asking people to do now is put money into Bitcoin machines, into Bitcoin ATMs. Those yeah. are untraceable. It's, it's over. Darren is asking... Um, do they use other platforms such as mobile text? Now, that's not st something we saw, but Mark, you've got experience in this field as a police officer. What do you think? Uh, in the beginning, uh, yeah, a long time ago. Um, now we've elevated to new levels. So technology is getting better and better, and text is, uh, quite frankly, it's old-fashioned. Petra is asking on Facebook, why don't they just run ads? And Petra, I assume you mean by this the federal government, the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. Why don't they just run ads on TV and radio in multiple languages outlining that the CRA just doesn't phone like this and then make a toll-free call of a number just to, to call and report these kind of things, make it visible. So Petra, a lot to unpack there. First of all, there is a place to report it. It's called the Canadian Anti-Fraud um, uh, Agency. Uh, a Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, and and they actually do take reports of it. But, you know, to your point about awareness, certainly if you go to the CRA's website, it tells you the conditions under which they would um, call you and that they would never threaten arrest or anything like that. 
But there is this question around, should there be a greater public awareness push from the federal government? Mark, your brief thoughts on that? Uh, briefly, yes, I agree totally with what she's asking for. And you know what? We're getting to that time of the year again where people are going to start prepping for tax season and the calls are going to start coming back fast and furious. They haven't ever stopped, but they're going to pick up. Adam D. on YouTube is asking about uh, the, the phone carriers, those who provide the phone numbers uh, to these scammers. Why not just crack down on them, Adam is asking. Well, um, that perhaps you're probably going to have to go back to the Indian side of the house and ask the Indian authorities. I'm sure they try. Uh, I know they've, they've made some major arrests as are outlined on the program. but uh, And you guys have seen it firsthand. You've seen exactly what they saw. Um, you know, admittedly, they have their hands full and it's a toughie, but that phone number issue is not this country's issue to deal with. It's theirs. Yeah. And it is challenging because they do change their actual phone number repeatedly. Like it can be as often as every 12 hours or, or sometimes even more often than that. But one of the yeah. things that we noticed is some of the phone numbers they use, these VoIP, these internet phone numbers, are actually from Canadian providers. Um, now, not necessarily the big guys, but uh, smaller operations, and these are being bought in bulk. It's unclear to us exactly um, how you could crack down on that. We just actually don't know. Daniel Joseph, though, is asking on Facebook, can we bill Rogers and Bell for each scam call we <laughs> receive? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I'm going to go with no. Yeah, Mark Simpson, what do you think? I'll, I'll second that, David. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, much as I'd like to know, no, we can't. Now, Mark has been talking uh, in a couple of his responses about the show. So Mark and I uh, met each other as we were putting together a program for CBC Marketplace. Uh, in Canada, you'll watch that uh, tonight, Friday night at 8 o'clock in every time zone, 8.30 in Newfoundland. Um, and and the, that show basically takes us to India because we have so many times heard from people who get these scam phone calls. We've heard people who take on the scammers and maybe yell back at them or, or toy them along for a while. We wanted to see who they were. And so we were able to, over the course of several weeks, track down who they were. Uh, Kareem is uh, commenting on YouTube and saying they also started sending CRA spoof emails regarding tax refunds that almost look legitimate and uh, wondering if i've heard of those i have not mark what about you no i've not come across that yet in other kinds of frauds uh, uh advanced fee frauds absolutely uh but not this one yet anyways yeah, and one thing that we notice with a lot of scams it might be this one it might be you know the you've won a lottery or you've won an inheritance that there's often the oh well you've won you've got we can give you a lot of money but you got to send us a little bit of money hundred bucks, a thousand bucks first, just to take care of administrative fees. Mark, when you hear that as a, as a former uh, fraud chief um, with the police, what goes through your mind when you hear about someone being offered something, but you got to pay a bit first? Yeah, well, if it's too good to be true, it probably isn't. Um, that was a normal practice in, in advanced fee fraud for decades, not just years, decades. Uh, I think that's fallen a bit by the wayside. There's not too, too many people fall for that anymore. However, um, occasionally it crops up. There was one recently I read about. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I can't, I, my time with major fraud and uh, doing these projects, I can't emphasize enough then and now. Um, again, uh, too good to be true. It ain't. And, just be careful out there. Nobody's nobody's going to ask you to cash a big check or send a big lot of money along and just keep a little bit of it for yourself because they can't. Those circumstances are just ludicrous. However, some people, uh, again, the elderly, uh, um, new people to the country, some of them don't understand our laws. Maybe this is okay. Those yeah. are the very uh, Ivy, Allen, and Audrey, we're getting your comments through on Facebook. We'll try to rip through them here. Um, Ivy is asking, is there something we can do as individuals to get the government to make public announcements, to push it a bit? 
you know, Ivy, more than 60,000 people have complained about being targeted, and it's information that the federal government has at their hands. So I don't, it's not like the feds don't know this is a problem. Um, it's not like the feds don't know that people are actually getting scammed. So it is a bit of a question about what more we could do as citizens to get those in power to actually recognize it. Mark, what would you say? Try and uh, um, talk to your uh, member of parliament, uh, send a letter, uh, an email, whatever yeah. it takes. Um, through the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, uh, ask them um, so when you report your crime, because you're going to be a victim of it, lots of people are, um, are you doing anything about this? Is this information being routed anywhere? Um, there's, there, it's, it's, it's hard to go after your local police service because their hands are tied. Uh, as I said, and, and you will say on the program, the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre takes or keeps the stats for uh, the entire country. Um, it's at their fingertips. Uh, bottom line is, we can stop all of this, and all of these people's questions are absolutely legitimate, but why yeah. can't send our information over there to the Indians who desperately want it? And they'll act on it because they've acted on the U.S. information that their intelligence gatherers sent. You know, Mark, here's an interesting question from Alan Bryan, and it flows right out of what you're talking about now. Alan's saying, I've called the police and was told not to bother phoning as they've already received too many calls. The, 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 the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center, well, that's... Well, Alan doesn't, uh, I don't have that uh, detail in here, but uh, that, that essentially there's no point in calling to report it because uh, there's too many people like you. No, uh, that's that doesn't make sense. The, the one of the purposes of the Canadian Anti Fraud Center is to uh, collect all of the data that they can by by the data or by the offense having been repeated a hundred times a day. Okay, they're going to take a hundred reports a day. Um, Audrey, yeah, Audrey Carey is asking on Facebook: uh, Are these guys also calling about computer problems? Because I've got those kind of calls as well. And Audrey, I'll just briefly answer your question to say, yeah, there's a Google scam out there. There's a Microsoft scam. They, they claim tech support. It's not exactly the same call centers, but often they are call centers in India. So why in India? Because India actually has a massive call center industry. You know, if we call the bank and you call the toll-free number, pretty good chance your call is actually being connected to India. Those are safe and secure call centers. The problem is out of, a, out of a business that employs millions of people, that there are some bad actors who are leaving, who know how to set up a, a call center and are doing really bad things. Swathi is asking on Twitter another question, are there tech solutions, like there is in terms of spam filters for emails, are there tech solutions that either the government or telecom companies are working on? Mark, you ever heard of anything? On the Canadian end, I can't comment. I don't know on the Indian end. I suspect that they would have. It's complicated. Uh, there's technology for anything and everything out there, but it all depends on the resources, including financial resources that you have available to you. I'm David Common uh, with CBC Marketplace, a consumer affairs program that's been looking at the CRA tax scam, one many people will be familiar with. They call you up, they say, oh, uh, you didn't pay enough tax or you made a mistake and you're going to get arrested and we're sending the police to you right now. You're going to go to jail unless you pay money right now. We've been looking at that in part because we went to India. We identified where some of these calls are coming from. Done a program on that, but happy to take your question on that scam or scams like it. Mark Simchison is uh, with us. He's a former fraud chief now teaching at uh, Niagara College in Ontario. And Sundance Kid is asking on Twitter, Mark, um, are politicians doing enough to pressure foreign governments to fight these crimes? And that, uh, Mark, as you know, because we've talked about it, it's an interesting question because when we were in India, we asked the Indian police why they haven't gone after these places targeting Canadians. And the Indian police said to us, well, uh, we need to hear from the RCMP. We're a complaints-based system. And until we hear from the Mounties that they have complaints, we can't do anything. And they claim that we they haven't heard from the Mounties. When we asked the RCMP, they didn't directly answer that question or that, that, that assertion. So, Mark, you know, when you hear the Indian police saying that, is it a cop-out on their part or are they legitimately saying they need help? The Indians legitimately need help. 
Um, and what we're doing here, or what we're not doing, um, again, I can't speak for what the Mounties uh, position on this is. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world. And is this their priority? I don't know. But if you add up the numbers and if you add up the number of victims out there and add some really, really simple, straightforward investigative solutions to them and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, publishing the information in the paper, uh, media campaigns, it, it's not rocket science. There is something that can be done. And, and I think Canadians are fed up with things not being done. Uh, there's a number of uh, people uh, commenting uh, on the social media feeds that are connected to this right now, and we, we thank you for your comments and questions. Uh, let there be no doubt about that. People are saying that they uh, are getting calls from outside of India. They've gotten calls from numbers in er from every state in the U.S. Now, I will point out, Pamela Keefe, you're, you're making this point. Just because it says the number is from a certain state does not mean that's where they're calling from. What we know about the Indian operation is that they can make it look like they're calling from anywhere. They can make it look like they're calling basically from your next door neighbor, but they aren't. They're half a world away. Mark, any comments on that? No, that, you hit the nail on the head with that. Uh, whatever shows up on your call display has no meaning anymore in this day and age. Tina is asking on Facebook, and it's a good question, how do the scammers get the phone numbers, particularly if they're looking at elderly people? Where do those numbers come from? Uh, lists uh, lists uh, uh, originate, a lot of them uh, originate from uh, identity theft uh, and massive breaches of security um, at uh, institutions, financial institutions, anything. Uh, we see them in the uh, media once in a while where such and such a company has been breached. Uh, the uh, Canadian Credit Bureaus get involved. They have to iron out all of that mess because a lot of personal information goes out there. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the dark web to deal with. You know, a number of people are also asking about whether these calls are originating from China. Um, one thing that we know from this particular scam, the CRA scam, is that there, there was a time, and there's very few that are now doing it, but that they would ask that you make your payment using iTunes cards or gift cards and scratch off the number and give it to them. A lot of people at that point would hang up and say, yeah, uh, this is a scam. Um, but those who didn't, you know, what was happening was those numbers were being routed through China. China was taking a cut. Some you know, shady business person was taking a cut in China. The rest of the money was going to India, where the scam was actually running from. We have never heard of this particular scam operating from anywhere other than India. But that's not to say it doesn't, Mark. These really could operate anywhere. No, absolutely. And I think one of the primary uh, purposes in life for the ringleaders of these organized crime groups, and that's exactly what they are, is to set up this tentacle network of theirs all over the world. So it's truly global. Um, makes it more difficult for police to investigate. That's one thing. Uh, and it also insulates them. Rob Mitchell is asking on Facebook, are they doing these scams in other countries? And Rob, just to pull out of the conversation we were having about where they were coming from, who are they targeting? Yes, we know that they're targeting Canada. But some of the same call centers are simultaneously calling Canadians, Americans, British and Irish people. Um, and in fact, they use the time zones to their advantage, calling European countries earlier in their day and, and then North American countries uh, like Canada and the US at a later point. They sort of stagger where it's happening. Heather Bell has an interesting um, thing that she's asking on Facebook. She says, after I speak to a real CRA person, I often get one of the scam calls within a very short time. Heather's asking, is there a leak at the CRA? What do you think? No, no, absolutely. Oh. Just a, a coincidence. I, I, a friend of mine, uh, same thing, exactly the same thing. In fact, she could have been the one that uh, posted that. Um, it came in within a day of her having to legitimately call the CRA. And she went, she, my friend, went through an absolute grilling process interviewing the CRA employee to make sure that they were legitimate. So the tables were turned there for a little bit. But no, no leaks from them. 
Kevin Bob Lawson is um, commenting that uh, he loves getting these calls because he plays along with them as long as he can. Um, Kevin, you know, that's an interesting thing. Lots of people do that. Lots of people have told us today that they do that. And Mark, I'm curious to get your thoughts because what I've been saying to people, and I hope that I've been right, is um, go ahead, do it. And my logic behind that, Mark, is that these are small teams, and if you're consuming their time, it just means they're not scamming a vulnerable person out of their money. If you have the time and you're so inclined and you want to do it, go for it. But Mark, would you say something differently? Uh, well, I've received some of the calls myself. And um, yeah, that's exactly what I do, David. I take up their time. I play with them. I try to get some decent intelligence if I can. Uh, I know the number of the Anti-Fraud Center, so I'll give them my name and information any day. Um, but yeah, you're ab absolutely right. Um, have fun with it. Brag to your friends that you had fun with it and you tagged them along for a half an hour or so and uh, did exactly what you said. Uh, but at the end of the day, do hang up and don't send any money. Uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunately, I, I, Mark uh, Simpson, who's joining us from Niagara College in Ontario, Canada, has, uh, has to go. Um, at this point, just because he's got uh, some other things going on. But we're still happy to keep taking your questions. I'll, I'll look after them. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure, David. Thank you for having us. So as we let uh, Mark go there, and it'll take a little while for his video to, to disappear on you, I'm just going to answer a couple of things. Donna Polger is, um, is asking on Facebook, she says, I've had calls from Nigeria. Mark, you, you should feel free to hang up, I should just say. You don't, don't feel you got to sit there. You, you and your team there can hang up. Perfect. Um, uh, Donna Polger is asking on Facebook, I've had calls from Nigeria, and why aren't you talking about that as well? Uh, that's a really good question, Donna. Um, we have never heard of this particular scam emanating from Nigeria. We've heard of other scams coming from Nigeria, and we at CBC Marketplace were really focused just on this one scam, the CRA scam, because it's one of the largest cyber schemes ever in Canadian history. So it really was our focus this time. Um, that's, that's why we're not talking about other scams. And there are many other scams that are out there, certainly. Uh, Victoria Joss is asking it on Facebook. Is it possible for phone companies to stop this? Victoria, that's not something that we specifically looked at. Um, but Mark was asked a similar question a bit earlier. Mark uh, Simchison, who was just with us a short time ago, uh, a former fraud cop. And his response was just that it, it's very difficult for these uh, phone companies to necessarily know what's, what's going on. But it's not necessarily impossible because huge numbers of phone numbers are actually being cycled, used by these bad guys, basically. And they change the phone number at least every 12 hours. So is there a way perhaps to identify bulk buyers of phone numbers? Like, why does anybody need 75 phone numbers a week? That might be a way to trigger it. But one thing we've learned about these scammers is they stay one step ahead. When they were becoming very obvious, having giant operations in India, they went to much smaller ones, like a dozen callers, and they'd move every month or two. Um, Aaron Rachel is also asking, can they still get your info if you don't call them back? And Aaron, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, the answer generally is no. I mean, the, the key information they want is money. They want to know how to get your money. And they're going to look for a way to get your money in an untraceable format. So, uh, uh, you know, just having your bank account numbers, for instance, that's not good enough. They're not going to be able to access your money just by doing that. So generally speaking, they, they, if you don't call them back, you should be fine. All right. If you get that robocall at home, it's a it's a scam. If it's obvious, like it's a robot, you know, this is Canada Revenue Agency. Forget it. It's not real. Hang up. Is not going to be a problem. Byron Armstrong's asking on Twitter, why doesn't the RCMP or FBI simply make it impossible for them to make up calls? Why raid buildings, use technology, simply tie up their phone lines? You know, uh, Byron, that's a good question. Obviously, I'm a journalist and not in law enforcement. I'm no, no tech wizard. Uh, it's hard enough for me just to bring this video up here today. So why don't they? Um, it may be a question of priorities, that there's more public attention on things like murders 
And so they put their their resources, everybody's resources are limited into that kind of a thing. Or if it's fraud, they're looking at big fraud, you know, million dollars and up. Um, or it may be uh, it, it may be something else. It may be um, that there isn't technology or that the scammers are, are outsmarting the technology that's out there. Clay Smart asking on Facebook, um, where do you think the database of numbers are coming from, the proposed victims' numbers? Clay, that that is a, a question we've tried to answer. So it's a there's a couple of possibilities. One is there's no logic at all. It's a robo dialer and it just goes sequentially and there's no connection to any reality at all. Another one is that it's an electronic phone book. That makes a little less sense because frankly, we're on cell phones that aren't in phone books a lot of the time. So then the next question is, there's a really good chance it's uh, coming off the dark web. It's stolen phone lists from wherever, you name it. And uh, they are just entering those numbers, building an algorithm to strip it out of some database, sticking it into their robo dialer, away they go. Curtis Gray is asking on Facebook, what happens if you call them back? Okay, first of all, don't call them back. But if you do, um, they are going to say, you know, what's your name? Um, and then they're immediately going to tell you, well, you made a mistake on your taxes. You owe money uh, and you owe money now. They'll say an amount. They won't say it right away, uh, but they will get to that point. And they, then they will offer you help. After threatening you, they will offer you help and say, we can do something, but it's got to be right now. You can't hang up the phone. You got to deal with this right now. They're going to look for a way to get money. Um, and then the way they get money varies. Increasingly now, it's it's getting people to go to a Bitcoin ATM. So Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency, which is effectively untraceable. And that's why these scammers really like it, because you put your money in this, this automated teller machine that is untraceable. Not even a bank can go and say, where did the money go? Um, Jordan is asking on YouTube, is the government of Canada doing anything to take this seriously? Are they capable of making a deal with foreign governments to end this global criminal ring? So, um, you know, I don't know what the RCMP are doing behind closed doors. I'm a journalist, uh, not a police officer. And, and, and the RCMP obviously don't want me knowing what's happening with the insides of their investigations. But I can tell you about our communication with them. And here's how it went down. Um, a couple of years ago in India, the IRS, the real IRS, the real tax authorities in the U.S., were getting a lot of complaints from people who were getting calls like this. So they called up the Indian police and said, guys, you got to do something. And the Indian police did. The Indian police did a massive raid, hundreds of arrests. And so when we were in India, we went to the police there and said, if you did that for the Americans and Canada's having the same problem, why not, why not to do something for the Canadians? And the Indian police said to us, we need to hear from the RCMP. We need to hear about complaints. And at least according to the Indian police, they have never received a call from the RCMP. So we called the RCMP. They wouldn't talk to us on camera. They simply said to us um, that the best way to prevent these types of crimes is through public awareness. They did not respond to the assertion from the Indian police that they've never made a contact. Now, if that's true, and if the Indian police really do need a contact, well, no, not, nothing is happening. Um, I hope that essentially ad addresses your question. Are they capable of making a deal with foreign governments to end this or at least address it? I don't know if they can end it. Um, can you limit it? Can you prosecute it? The Americans have found a way uh, to do that, and it resulted in a lot of arrests. Um, so that's essentially a, a lot of what we've been getting up to uh, over the last little while. Thanks so much to everybody who has uh, tuned in. Uh, for this Facebook Live, it's also appearing on some Twitter streams and also a YouTube live stream. Really appreciate all the questions we've had. If you want to see more about this, it's always more info. CBCnews.ca is the website. We've got full explanation up there about our investigation in India, trying to find these guys, these scammers behind this. But also uh, we have information um, there about how not to get scams. If you'd like to see the documentary we did, it's airing tonight, Friday night on CBC television in Canada. That's eight o'clock in every time zone, 830 in Newfoundland. And we'd love to uh, have you tune into that.
I'm David Common with CBC Marketplace. A little earlier, we had Mark Simchison, who is uh, an, a, a, an instructor now at Niagara College in Ontario, but used to be the fraud chief for a major Ontario police force. And we thank him and we thank you for tuning in. And with that, we'll wrap up this live stream. Thanks very much.